everyone. I'm Peter Breen, Editor-in-Chief of Consumer Goods Technology, and I'm here at the Retail and Consumer Goods Analytics Summit. And we're taking a break from some of the other activity just to have a quick chat with Richard Wagner, founder and CEO of Prevedere, and with Chris Derringer, uh, National Sales Director for Retail and Consumer Packaged Goods for Microsoft. Um, gentlemen, you know, there's been a lot of conversation recently about the health of the consumer goods industry, um, and in particular, the future of the traditional retail um, brick and mortar retail stores. Um, what's your take on these things? Where do you see the future of consumer goods? You know, I think if you look at it, you hear a lot about the retail apocalypse, right? And I don't think it's so much uh, apocalypse as much as it's a right sizing. Um, you've got, you know, we had a lot of uh, exponential growth. So there's an adjustment of what that looks like. If you look at some European markets, um, they found what that right mix is. Uh, but it's more about the experience, right? When you have a physical footprint, a lot of it right now is having a differentiated experience and bringing that into your consumers. I mean, if you look at most of the buyers in today's market, a lot of them are more focused on experience and, and they see a lot of brands moving in and out. So that true experience you're giving once you're in a store at the right product at the right time with the right message is, is key. Richard? Yeah, I would agree with that. I think it's, uh, one, it's, it's change. Change is happening in the way that consumers behave, how they want and do shop. Uh, I think it's an age of, of convenience, right, where we have a cell phone or a mobile phone that we can actually click and buy anything we want, so there, there may be less impact of things like advertising and promotion, uh, door busters. So just the, the change that's happening is the way the consumer wants to experience the shopping experience and, and how they buy. I think it's also an opportunity, though, uh, for companies to truly understand uh, what consumers are doing because there's a, a deluge of information available and we can track and monitor what's going on better. Uh, so even though there may be less people physically in a brick and mortar, uh, their experience can be more tailored to them. What then is the is the key to um, anticipating future demand? As I said, we're here we're here at Arcas. We're hearing a lot about analytics and about prediction. I mean, is that what we're talking about here? Is that the key? Uh, yeah. So I mean, I think you, leveraging someone's data as state is paramount right now, right? Um, we we have a lot of customers, you know, retailers specifically, talk about how can I market, and I'll use my Seattle example. How could I how could I market to the stay-at-home mom on Thursday when it's raining while the Seahawks are playing, right? That's a lot of data to bring together to understand how I can uh, deliver a personalized message to someone. We think about proximity, identity, and content being the three things to do strong personalization. Uh, but getting all that there is, is the first step, drawing their attention. The second piece is, is having the products on the shelves that make that difference. And there's a lot of data needed in that. When we look at that, you know, anyone can show you which products are selling and versus which aren't, but when you look at uh, a sales lift, um, you have to bring in a lot of external factors, cross cannibalization, uh, cross sell, upsell. When you bring a lot of those things into bear and having the right product on shelf, that's what will make a differentiator to, to get around a lot of those stock out issues. Yeah, I would agree. I think data is the key, and, and having data is, is one thing, but it can also be overwhelming. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's what you do with that. How do we actually find uh, the signals and clues that are truly going to tell us what the shopper is going to want next? And then how do we use that information to make accurate and timely predictions, as well as be able to put it into an automated, systematic, and repeatable way that every decision we make now is data-driven? Right, so that we can capture and maximize, even if it's a smaller opportunity uh, physically, we can maximize that experience. Okay, now Microsoft and Previdere will be, be conducting a, a, a joint workshop this afternoon where all attendees are going to be receiving copies of a new report that's looking at the evolution of business intelligence um, and how we're now at a critical turning point in this evolution. Um, what's going on there? Why is this the time to re be releasing a report on that subject? Yeah, I think I'll start with that one. I think there's three things that are coming together extremely well right now. And, and the first thing is the, the rise of global data and the availability of global data. Um, not just economic data and consumer behavior for online, but IoT data, smart appliances and devices, telling more about what the consumer's doing and, and what they're going to do in the future. Uh, the second thing is the power and scalability of cloud computing. So now we can actually harness and process millions of signals and clues really just in minutes. Whereas before in client server technology, uh, we really didn't have the horsepower. May have wanted to have the data, uh, may have tried to gather it, but we really couldn't process and say what really matters. And the third thing is machine learning and prediction is getting smarter. So what we're doing is we're finding that really big data and, and even data science, it's not really about people, what individual person can do or data science, but what can hardware and software do that we can't or don't have the capacity to do. 
Yeah, I'll, I'll echo um, what Rich said. That was <laughs> a great, a great synopsis. I mean, when you look at the intelligent edge, I think when you wrap around a lot of these IoT type devices, understanding people's behavior, uh, what products are moving in and out, it gives you. When we look at sales driver analysis or uh, predictors of demand, that is the competitive edge that really drives uh, companies. When you talk about their predictive models from around 50 to 60 percent up to 80 and 90 percent, um, to talk about the the cloud compute. Yeah, we're at a time where. You know, the Microsoft platform has allowed many things out there that just weren't possible before. before. Foundations on machine learning, foundations on cognitive services, on predictive analytics, um, but that, that's a base. Uh, with the folks at Privateri have done is they've got some valuable IP on top of that that really brings a lot of that together and makes it incredibly simple for our customers to take advantage of and, and, and digest. Okay, great. Now when we're talking about this kind of advanced analytics, there are a couple of practical applications that you could maybe mention? Yeah, we've got uh, quite a few use cases across consumer goods and retail, and it's everything from the strategic planning, uh, things like marketing spend optimization, where we can actually do an analysis by city, maybe by MSA, sometimes down to a zip code, and we can help mar marketers really maximize ROA, ROI on their investments. So knowing where and what to spend uh, is very important for companies, and they can end up really getting 10 to 15% lift in their marketing spend, but also know exactly when and where to do it so that they're not wasting dollars and, and precious marketing dollars in markets that are naturally growing for demand for their products. Uh, so that's one. The other is, is more tactical, and it's based more on inventory. Uh, what we know today is most consumer goods and retail companies carry a lot of excess inventory. That inventory costs them quite a bit, and they'll carry more than needed typically uh, because they don't ever want to be in a stock out situation, which we talked about before, where you may try a competitor. Uh, you may go across the street to another store and become loyal to that brand or loyal to that store. Uh, so they're carrying too much inventory, and if you can actually get more accurate on demand for inventory, you can really erase millions of bottom line costs to help that profitability. Yeah, every CPG company I talk to has a Monday morning report that they do in some form of fashion. It's pulling lots of data together that they chug for days to get to the retailer to suggest here what we want to do with our products on shelf. Um, I really like the, the solution that we're talking about here because you've got both the, the retail companies trying to maximize the dollars on shelf as well as the CPGs trying to maximize that, that environment. And, and leveraging uh, the machine learning uh, AI platform and really giving folks that recommendation engine in a short amount of time, we've seen built up solutions in you know one to three to six months depending on the the complexity um, gives the CPG companies that analytics and that insights back to make more recommendations around trade promotion management, around shock, uh, st um, uh, stock outs, and uh, how to leverage the, the shelf that they have today. Terrific. Okay, so now here at Arcas, one of the things um, um, that drives people to the event is, is benchmarking, to see where they, they stack up um, versus the rest of the industry. Um, if I can ask you to do a little bit of that. If, if you look at, at um, um, basic reporting is the foundation, and then the the, uh, um, the future state of business intelligence that you talk about in the report as the higher end. Where would you say the industry is right now, most of the industry at least? I think there's a, there's a couple reports that we look at and we see it as we go out and talk to our customers that they're really at the executive level. They surveyed and said, okay, well you may have analytics or you may have reporting, but, but how trustworthy is it? And what we found is two thirds of the C-suite said that their internal data and reports and analysis are unreliable. So they don't have enough of the right information at the right time. So that's a, that's a big number. Um, but what's happening is with the advent and the ease and ability to, to really leverage cloud computing immediately, I think it's, it's shifting pretty quickly. Uh, so as we go in, the market is coming toward us. People are looking for predictive, right? They want to get away from static and internal and historical that they can't fix or change. Uh, that they're adopting predictive, they're adopting data faster than ever before. So I think over the next couple years, we may see that two thirds that didn't trust it, now we're down to a third, or maybe a half, and then a third over the next couple years. So I think it's coming quickly, but that's some of the things that we look for is, well, how many executives at the C-suite really trust and believe in the data they're getting? And if we watch that and we give them information that they trust and believe in, they'll make better decisions. Okay, terrific. Um, that'll wrap it up. Uh, uh, again, Richard and Chris, thank you for taking some, uh, some time out from the event here to, uh, to give us your insights.